Live. All righty. All right, going live, going live, and you are live. What's up, guys? Move over, kids. How are you today? We've got ourselves the the great bearded William. Uh, not to, not to. You have his own beard. You have your <laughs> own beard right there. So I guess we all have. My beard's not as great. It's just a little goatee, just a little baby goatee. But guys, what's up? How you doing? Pretty good. Yeah, doing all right. Doing all right. All right. What's uh, Devin? You got a pretty good score this week. You want to tell us about it? Well, yeah, I've gotten some. Well, the weirdest item that I've ever had come into my collection lately: the Super Mario shower head. And you got some that? Pretty, yeah, the, I did the video on it. I didn't see your video. Show it's it. Show it. Brand new inbox. It just has a little rip on the cellophane right here, but it's a Mario and Luigi shower head. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen, but I had to have it. Hey, Destiny Little, how are you? Um, yeah, that is. Uh, how much do you did you tell? Do you reveal how much you paid for it? Sixty bucks. Uh, so, I got a good deal on it. That's not bad. Sixty bucks for something that old, that vintage, and <laughs> and the the shower head's older than me. <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought it it's such a cool thing. It the paint's a little messed up, but that's probably from manufacturing issue. The but real question is, are you gonna are you gonna whip that bad boy out and start showering with it? No, not unless the box gets horribly damaged. <laughs> give him um, give him ten thousand subscribers and he'll do it but you, oh, got, yeah. you got to give it to him in the next uh next month then i think i need to open up one of them only fans things and yeah that, <laughs> that'll get a little weird <laughs> where did you uh where'd you end up getting that from facebook marketplace so some dude just facebook marketplace a shower head <laughs> no, when, just... when you when, when you when you go and do the video you just have to start the video with hey paisanos <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, that was from the old cartoon, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Super <laughs> Mario. The show. Um, no, I I know this. I know the lyrics to it. Oh yeah, what are the lyrics? <laughs> oh, the, oh, the, the 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 ending one. What are they? You remember, remember the do the Mario? Oh yeah, the do the Mario. Yeah. Do the Mario. Move your arms from side to side. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. But yeah, it, it became a big joke. The part at the end, just like that. <laughs> That's so weird. I did That's a so Mario. Weird. I did a Mario celebration video like for Mar- March tenth day, like last year or something. And yeah, I went through a bunch of old, uh, old uh, Mario and Luigi, Captain Lou Albano, R.I.P. Uh, the show. Oh, so the, speaking of those old TV shows, the Captain N that you guys keep talking about. Yeah, Captain N, man. Captain N. Hey, hi. I, I was on Animal Crossing, and I noticed, it, to me, it looks, I should have took a picture of it, but it looks like it's a direct Captain N reference. It was a superhero outfit with a big yellow N on his chest. Oh, yeah? So I, I'm, I'm going to have to try to find it again, but it definitely seemed like it was a direct reference. <laughs> you know, Captain N was supposed to be the um, the cutting edge Mario, basically. They figured Mario was too, um, too, uh, P- too G-rated to, to do like the stuff, the cutting edge, like be edgy that the teens wanted. So basically, Captain N was invented to be Nintendo's you know, basically teen mascot. But they really <laughs> screwed up the characters on that show. <laughs> oh yeah, they did. Mega I've Man. never watched it. I've only every ever seen time, the comic. Yeah, every time like they they'd introduce a new character from the games, it was never the way the character should look. Never. Never ever. The although I do fondly remember the Zelda episodes. There were like two Zelda episodes, I believe, and I thought they were really good back in the day. But now when I I can't remember if they're if they held up to age, but I remember like things like Mega Man was from Mega World instead of being like he was just he had a Mega Mom and Mega yeah. Brothers. Yeah, uh, yeah. Whereas in the original games, he's from uh, Monsteropolis. Yeah, I don't know if that's just uh, the American version or if the uh, Japanese version called it that. And Simon Belmont was like uh, he stuck was a, up. Yeah, suck up, narcissistic. But like a really coward, <laughs> and uh, Kid Icarus. I'm not sure what they did with. It. Definitely not like the pit. You, you know, Kid Icarus was more like those chubby babies that um, Raphael drew and painted. He, he from... would add. He would add like Icarus, Icarus at the end of all his stuff. And everything he said. Hey, Nick Clanton. Nick Clanton missed your uh, your um, your showerhead. Show him the showerhead. He's a he's a sucker for uh, 
No, he saw the video, but yeah, I oh, yeah. show off the shower head again. It, I still can't get over how freaking weird this thing is. <laughs> Just imagine. Look at that kid, like the skull protector <laughs> with built in skull like, protection. I was trying to explain it like it's Mario and Luigi just having fun in the shower. Like, I don't know how else to explain that. <laughs> that's, pretty much, uh, that's pretty much exactly how you should explain it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, my, my, big, my big pickup for uh, this week was in television Spiker. Spiker, the re release of yes. Spiker. The the re release. How much did that set you back? Seventy. Seventy. Yep. That ain't bad to get to be able to complete the collection. That's that's not bad considering what uh, the copy from the eighties costs. How much does the copy from the eighties cost? Thousand complete in box. Ooh, ouch! If not a little more. I... What about out of the box? <laughs> out of the box, I don't think I've priced it out of the box. Yeah, okay. Because I'm only I'm only going for complete in box copies of stuff in oh, my collection. You're going in box. You're, you're yeah. Uh, your um that is the only system i'm going complete in box for i'll say that right now i'm not worried about boxes for my virtual boy collection okay well, yeah i was yeah. gonna say I, I was just randomly look i saw somebody near me that was selling a tellero box or completed box for 50 bucks and then i out of curiosity looked at more of them and mm -hmm. like water world is like 350 yeah i got my water world for 100 so. Um, and it's gone up to like 150, I think, recently. I think I saw a copy at um, Core Gaming the other day. I saw the the lowest I've seen lately was 350 complete in box. Yeah, oh, I don't okay. even want to know what Jack Brothers is right now. <laughs> it's about 500. Jack Brothers. Mm. Yeah, that's the Virtual Boy, the Nintendo stepchild of a console. Yeah, that yeah. is the. You one think game the Wii U failed? Have. You think the Wii U failed? Check out the Virtual Boy. But isn't there only like ten games for the Virtual Boy or something like that? Something 14. like that. How many? Fourteen. Okay. There's fourteen games. Fourteen games. Well, uh, I'm the, pretty much the only reason why I got these is because I'm I'm like I'm, I was interested in the GoldenEye to keep, but this and this are probably going to be trade bait for, towards my Wii U uh, collection. Those are supposed to be good good RPGs. I've I've heard the last story is a pretty pretty nice one to find. So when I when I saw them sealed, I'm like, dude. <laughs> yeah. I love you the know? artwork for the game as well. It does look pretty cool. Nick Clanton, I am going nuts without the Zelt. He he mentioned that my background is a little different. Yeah, I've uh, since I have moved. I'm now in the mitten. I'm right about here in in the mitten. Nick Clanton, if you're looking for a vacation spot, Traverse City right here is, is supposed to be pretty good. So you could cut through Grand Rapids to Traverse City if uh, if you still wanted to um, make the rounds. Um, now, are you going to be doing some uh, painting, uh, like different colors to the rooms, or no? This is I am actually not in. This is a rental right now, so I'm, oh, okay. I'm doing nothing with it. You're um, not in, you're not in your your official new residence yet. Yeah, I still I came ahead of my uh, wife and kids, so like mm -hmm. I'm figuring things out, and uh, and then we'll all get together at the next locale. Yeah, that's what I would have done too if um, I had gotten the job up in Maine that I tried to get last year. Oh yeah, yeah, did not get it. So, uh, so. Devin, you said Animal Crossing got beat out by a, a surprise contender, huh? Yeah, I was looking at the the eShop just before we jumped on, and I never expected it, but I, I mean, I kind of expected it to be a good game, but Minecraft Dungeons is number one spot on the eShop. Although, rightfully speaking, like you said, Animal Crossing's been up there for like three months. Oh, so. it's, also, it's also a digital-only game as well. Oh, is it? Well, for now, you never know what a limited run might get a hold of. Yeah, I'm, I'm not... I'm not buying it digitally if i'm gonna get that game i'm gonna get a physical copy i didn't yeah, know it was I, digital I only and yeah it's digital only there's a couple and i could see it also it's minecraft so it's also like the most popular game among kids and <laughs> no that would be fortnite right now unfortunately yeah, fortnite, yeah. well minecraft st still is up there fortnite probably beat it out because minecraft has like the educational editions too have you ever played the educational editions of minecraft no, yeah. I think only schools can get a hold of them unless no. you were like hacking off the internet or something. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. Although it would be interesting if there was like physical copies of it for collections. It'd be similar to um, like Sony did some educational stuff for uh, the PlayStation One. They also Sony has a uh, place for the PlayStation. Uh, the PSP has a um, very rare Hilton Hotel training thing. Ooh. 
Um, I'm looking. I'm gonna look that up right now. Yeah, it's like the. It's like only like 500 of them were made or something. It's like That's super funny. rare. Hmm. Um, Interesting to know, though. I've never heard of that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, uh, Rerez did a thing about it. Uh, so what else is going on, boys? I haven't. I have not bought a PS4, but I'm still considering it. The um, I think PlayStation. Uh, I mentioned last week that PlayStation was going to have all the press conference this week or last week or whatever week it is, but they ended up postponing it due to all the um, world events going on. So uh, we don't know what's happening with the PS5 yet. Well, you might be able to scratch your Fallout itch because Outer Worlds is finally out on the Switch now. Yeah, I, I've seen that. I've seen that. Has anybody played it at all by chance? I bought it, but I didn't open it yet. I'm trying to bust through uh, Bioshock 2 first. Bioshock 2. So you did you get all the whole... I know... Um, well, I'm waiting. I'm not a big first person guy, so uh, I'm trying to to I'm trying to wait for a used copy to come out at GameStop for Outer Worlds. That way, I could try it, and I have seven days to return it because I might it might be for me. It might not. The Fallout aspect of it is totally going to be for me, but the the um, the first person part. Very rarely do I play first person. Um, well, it's also on. Um, it's made by the same people that were behind of uh, what's it called New Vegas, and th- those you know among the Fallout fans are like one of the top Fallout games ever made. Although personally, I think Fallout Four is better, but whatever. Well, Fall- Fallout Four is also um, takes place around my area. Yeah, yeah. Except like my my town is not in it though. Oh no! <laughs> if they if they went a little farther. A little farther north, I probably my town probably would have been in there. Nick Clanton said he he bought an Xbox and he 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 said it hurt to buy an Xbox. Nick Clanton, what what games did your son want to play? Because um, I'm thinking of buying a play a PlayStation actually based upon a couple games, um, and I would be interested to see what Xbox games are because my games that I want are Red Dead Redemption and fallout 4 which both can be bought on xbox and playstation but i want spider-man and um probably what's that new dawn event or event horizon Horizon zero dawn i've heard good things about that game so there's two playstation exclusives that i really want not to mention i did i was always a fan of the uncharted series but i don't know i'm just not not into them as much as as I used to be, uh, Nick, uh, Chris Carleo. I don't like how all the new games from S two K came out with the required large downloads. Yeah, that sucks. That just sucks. I hate when they do that. Did the packaging at least look good, Devin? For for like Bioshock and stuff. Like like did it have that like download bar over? Yeah, it's got the download code. Uh, the thing is, is on the Bioshock ca- uh, cart. It has the um, first. I think it's pretty much got the f- entirety of the first game on it, or it's got sections of each game. Oh. Because I put it in, and you know, it, it started downloading for each game. Um, the Handsome G- Jack collection of Borderlands, I think, was entirely just the first game, and then you have to download the other two. Yeah, yeah, that sucks. I don't know. I mean, it took up a lot of space. Yeah, but. If you're a fan of those games, you're gonna do it. Like that's, a, I love I, Bioshock, so I, I need I need a memory card for my for my. Son. I got a 256 gig one on mine. And- nobody, nobody in the area, except for maybe Best Buy, but I can't go into a Best Buy right now, has anything over 128. I'd I got rather- mine at Best Buy, dude. You should just uh, look it up. Yes, but no, I can't go into one right now well, i'd rather pay i'd rather up. yes i'd rather pay cash right now i have cash on me gotcha <laughs> i see your point yes i see your point i have okay. the cash on hand to give to somebody take my money has. please yes the fry meme comes into play <laughs> yeah don't take my card take my money what um what do you guys think are the best it, it doesn't you don't have to like it or, or it doesn't have to be one of your favorite games, but what are what would you say are the best Nintendo games of all time? Like, just the games that made the mark that really 
uh, set the tone. Now, it could be your favorite game because I know Super Mario World is your what your favorite game, Devin. And I would say definitely Super Mario World would have a place on this most influential, most best game list. So it, it might, it might not. I would say Wii Sports actually, and it's probably that, not that my have a huge influence. Yeah, I would say it's not one of my favorite games of all time, but I I enjoyed Wii Sports like crazy. What would you say, William, as some of the most influential mm. games out there? Well, you and I go way back in terms of our gaming. Uh, Mario 3 was it. Yeah. Like that was, that was the game that you had to have. If you, ha- if you had a Nintendo system back in the 80s, early 90s, that was the game to have. Yeah, they made a whole movie. Wizard. Remember the Wizard movie? I have it down here somewhere. <laughs> the whole, the whole, they had a whole movie was basically one big commercial for either the Power Glove or Mario Three. <laughs> EPS five thousand. What up? I still want a Power Glove because of that. I still want one. I still want a Power Glove too. I remember wanting the Power Glove so I could play uh, uh, Mike Tyson's Punch Out. I thought that would be like <laughs> the the best way. I was like, "There's no way to play Mike Tyson's Punch Out without a power glove." That's the best way to play. Even though I never, I never knew that there was two different sizes. Oh, there I is. Never, I no, I could, that. I could have sworn that there was a left-handed one. There actually isn't. I thought there was one. Yeah, I, I never saw one while I was looking it up. But yeah, there's a medium. Uh, I think they say medium or small and large or whatever. But yeah, there's two different sizes. I never knew that. I just thought they were all the same. I n- I've never tried to put one on, though. I, I My cousin had it. Um, he didn't keep it very long. His, uh, he, they returned it because it didn't work that well. Well. A- Super, <laughs> Super Jeremy World, uh, guy from last week um, uh, who was on the show. He, hey, Jeremy. He, uh, he agrees. After the Wizard, you had to have Mario 3. Um, something something a lot of people might not know is that the Mario 3 had um, it was released on the Game Boy Advanced and then there was there was um, an e-card reader and the e-card reader had cards and if you swiped the cards on on that you could get extra levels of Super Mario Brothers 3 I have no idea where my cards are right now <laughs> well the the way to um, the way to bypass that is if you get on the Wii U and you you go to the eShop and you get Super Mario Brothers 3 on the Wii U, that mm-hmm. gives you the e-card levels. Oh, nice. So that's the only way, though. There's only two ways to get those levels. Unless, I don't know, I guess I guess anybody can emul- emul- emulate them or whatever, you know, on a Raspberry Pi or whatever. But I, I don't prescribe to that if the um, if the rumored remakes are true and if they decided to do a remake of um oh what was it? the um mario all-stars if they decided to do a mario all-stars remake i feel they should if they when they're putting mario 3 in there they should add those levels yeah that would be cool and hunter just get just boot up the wii u and download it there if you're if you're as big a fan as um a mario 3 then you probably must own levels um, but whenever we get off this topic, I, I have another thing to bring up. So go on. <laughs> well, bring it up, and we we can always return. We can circle back. The Game Gear Micro. Oh yeah, yeah the Game yeah. Gear Micro. <laughs> what a yeah, disaster! I, post, I posted okay. that as one of the stories to bring up. I don't think it's going to be a disaster though, because I have a feeling that this like they're going to do it, but then they're going to because they said a while ago that we have something that's going to like shake up the video game industry or whatever they said. That's not shaking anything up. That's not shaking anything up, but who's to say that this wasn't just a ploy to get people like, "Oh, focused on Sega." The same way that they everybody got focused on the Se- uh, the uh, almost said Mario movie, Sonic movie when it first came out. It looked like hot garbage. <laughs> then they were like, "Here you go, here's the better thing." And then everybody was all ecstatic about it and liked it. I have a feeling that there this isn't it. Like they're gonna release these. I'm up actually. I'm about to buy the set of them from Japan right now. What are the okay? So what? Uh, set it up. What is the Game Gear? Pesty. What up? Uh, drive safe, my friend. Um, what is the Game Gear Mini? Tell us about it. Well, it's if for anybody that uh, has was back in that era. I forget when the Game Gear mic uh, Game Gear came out. William, it was when like was it? Very early nineties. Okay, well, double check. I thought it was before I was born. Okay, uh, well, either way, 
Um, Octo October 6th, 1990. Yeah, it came know. out right after the Game oh, Boy. Oh, in, J in, in Japan, the U.S. release was April 91. I don't really know much about the Game Gear. I just remember my brother had one, and I remember playing Sonic. I forget which one on there, and I just I loved it. I thought it was an awesome system. My brother had one, and we had the um, Master System converter for it. Hmm. Uh, but anyway, so the Game Gear was a, it came out originally to rival the Game Boy. Am I right? Yeah, and there was some really heavy marketing trashing on the Game Boy. Oh yeah, that's that was yeah. that was the era of. Genesis does what Nintendo. Yeah, and it wasn't wasn't the first console wars either. That was in television and Atari. <laughs> but anyway, so each of these game game gears is apparently going to be fifty bucks a piece, which and that is where I'm like, eh, because it's looking like that you see the picture, and the game gear is fitting on somebody's hand about right there, and I don't know, that's probably maybe like four inches something like that you wouldn't you say but mm -hmm. yes but also you have to kind of worry a bit because <coughs> who's whose hand because exactly is yeah. it andre the giant or what <laughs> no because it's it's not not really a stereotype people uh, people in japan are a little smaller than other people in terms of their height you know not many people had uh, blonde hair over there. I'd stand out in the crowd over there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm fi I'm five foot three, five foot four. I feel like I'd be taller than many people in in groups over there. So is no it, that that the palm like my palm is going to be smaller than yours. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know the exact size because at the moment it, there's no like words that it's coming out in America yet. It's only in Japan at the moment. Which is yeah. another reason why I'm kind of thinking that there might be something else. But EPS says is, EPS says there is something else. It's like they're gonna do arcade gaming at home, gaming or something I don't like know what that. that is. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. But there was there there were arcade games that didn't really get that big of a release over here in terms of uh, console stuff. So who knows? Maybe they might do a um, arcade release. Like the compilation of some of their ar of arcade titles, especially that, that like cool. the like um, like Daytona and stuff like that. Like some maybe some arcade perfect releases of Daytona and some other stuff. But at the moment, so each of these things, there's a black one, a blue, a yellow, and a red, and they are each have four games on them. And I well, I don't have the exact list on me right now. But then there is going to be this big window micro that, that you can basically clip onto the front of it and magnify it. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think they look cool. I'm probably going to get this set, like I said. But I can see where people are kind of like, eh, because they're so tiny. To me, it's an <laughs> eh, based upon the fact that, I mean, they Sega just hit it out of the park with a, with a classic uh, mini. <laughs> Of the Genesis, it had like sixty-two games or something on it, and it was selling for what fifty, seventy, eighty bucks. I'm not sure, but now you have to 80. buy, huh? It was eighty. Eighty bucks. Okay, eighty bucks for for we'll just say fifty-two games, even though I think it was more than that. Um, now you have to pay f fifty bucks for four games. That's just weird to me. Yeah, and each each color has a diff has four different games on yeah, it. Yeah, like uh, w the blue one, I think has um three or four different Shining Force games on it. The red one has the Sonic games on it. The, the, one of the no, it's um. Or I don't know. Let me, the let me find. Let me find. Let me find the video real quick so I can see yeah, what the games it. were. Um. Either way, I, I was, was trying to find the list. And... If they were going to do anything to kind of do what like they did with the PlayStation TV. To make a small little game here that you can take mobily, because then they could rival Nintendo again, and then have something that you could take that same mini console and hook it up to the TV. Yeah, that would be cool. Something yeah, like that, that would. Be I would cool. have preferred something like that. Okay. I think, I think that the, the, that might be still something in the pipeline because if they did this back in the Game Gear's time, they might try to do it again as maybe kind of like a haha joke joke. So so okay so here's the list of so the black one has. Sonic the Hedgehog, some um, some puzzle game that look that has like bubbles. A um, wobble? No, it's kind of it looks kind of like Mean Bean Machine. Oh. Um, 
Hang On and a RPG series called Royal Stone. Uh, the blue has Sonic and Tails, Gunstar Heroes, Sylvian Tail, which is, um, let me look. It looks like a, I'm watching the, the it looks like a uh, Zelda style game. What is it called? Top down. I think it's called Sylvian Tail. Sylvian Tail. I just saw something that was like a Zelda clone from Genesis. I wonder if that's what it is. Um, I've never heard of it. Most of the games I had never really paid attention. Yeah, to. Yeah, like, I was never, I was never a Genesis guy, so like, I really don't know. Other than Sonic and yeah, like I don't really know anything. Like that. the first Sonic game that I ever played was the Sonic and Knuckles game that you could actually put another game on top of it. <laughs> like I never understood that because like I saw a picture the other day that you could get a stack of stuff that you can just put on top. Yeah, of Yeah, the Sega game. Tower. <laughs> like I saw somebody that actually made a Sega Tower for the mini. Like they made little adapter things that they don't do anything. It's just like a little piece of plastic. Yeah, yeah, they uh, they <laughs> like, were selling it. I saw. I actually want to get one. Somebody on Etsy makes miniature cartridges that you can put into the um, Genesis Mini. Oh, that'd be cool. I think it's just as an aesthetic uh, uh, kind of thing. I I, want, I actually want to buy one. Yes. Yeah, so Super Jeremy World agrees with me. We should have made it like three, four sides of the Game Gear with 30 to 50 games. That, now, that would have been cool because the Game Gear is a very underlooked system. Mm-hmm. That's you, what I was thinking. I thought you, it was an awesome system back in the day. Yeah, if you could add, like, uh, if you could add, like, even 20 of the solid games, because I don't know how many really good games there were for the Game Gear. I, I'm not sure, but, like, that's also another thing that I got in a recent pickup. I have a, uh, got a sealed case of Game Gear games, too, for the oh, Jungle Book. <laughs> You're picking up the most random stuff lately. Yeah. I know. It just keeps happening. I actually found the, the list of games. So that, that puzzle game that's on the, the black one is Poyo Poyo 2. Oh, Poyo Poyo. Oh, yeah. okay. The, the blue one also has a game called Baku Baku Animal. Baku Baku. Yeah. Um, the yellow has those... the Shining Force games and some, uh, looks like a cooking game, I think. And then the other, the other one, the, the red has the two, uh, last Bible games, uh, Shinobi game and Columns. Yeah. See, it's not, I guess, I guess they're trying to really get the collector the collectors that's the only that's the only way they're doing it when they released their genesis mini they were really all about value and quality this to me screams like cash grab like people kind of does in a way like i like the only thing that i'm saying is the cash grab because it's that expensive because there's four games on it and it's like this big yeah so I, i said it was a cooking game but it looks more like it's also a puzzle game it looks like it looks actually that one I think looks more like Mean Bean Machine. The way the way the the pictures for the game looked, I almost thought it was a cooking game. Mm-hmm. Oh, or it might oh. have been a different game altogether. Yeah, definitely. What I just um I think that they are also trying to make it a little better by having like that magnifying window that you can clip onto it. So I guess that makes it a little better. Yeah, yeah but then how much is that going to be? Well, the package that I uh, just looked up on Amazon J- uh, JP. Is twenty one thousand yen, which I think is equate to like two hundred and two hundred bucks, something like that. I don't know what yen equates to in American dollars, but it's a lot. But yeah, so I don't know that it seems like it's a package of all four of the consoles and one of those windows as a bonus. The Genesis Mini was supposed to be about value, but most of the games were obscure and dumb. I was disappointed. <laughs> Nick Clanton telling it like it is. I actually, I didn't buy the, I, I almost bought the Genesis Mini. I think I actually bought it, then I returned it because I was like, what am I doing? I'm not a Genesis guy. Um, though I'm sure there are some great gl- games on it. Like ba- Batman and Robin was totally different on the Genesis than it was on um, the Super Nintendo. The, the Game Gear version of the um, Power Rangers fighting game was really fun. Really? Yeah. It was fast compared to Mortal Kombat on the Game Gear. The game was fast. Mortal, oh yeah, I heard I heard horror tales of the Game Gear. On, yeah, or it the was, uh, Mortal Kombat on Game Gear. 
but uh, but it was it was uh, faster than the one on the Game Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. What are you gonna do? So, what other games did, did you tell me a, a a classic game that was like one of Nintendo's best games of all time? Devin, Ooh. you. Oh, um, I'm biased because I would just say automatically Super Mario World, but. I would honestly, like, I know you guys said Super Mario 3, but 2 was, pa- uh, when I first played Super Mario World, my brother showed me All-Stars, and that was the first time I played Super Mario 2, and I fell in love with that game, even though it's technically Doki Doki Panic Doki, in yeah. Japan or whatever, I still love that game. <laughs> so, would you say, I don't know, yeah, that's a weird one. Uh, there's I a- know it's one i'm it's just it's going back to my childhood though like that's the only reason why i'm really saying it <laughs> yeah i guess uh, i guess super mario 2 do, does not get enough love because you gotta imagine super mario 1 came with every single nintendo console so it was like it had to be the most popular game of the era even though mario 3 probably you know built upon it and you know honed in everything but so everybody i remember waiting for mario 2 and i was like well, this is way different but i remember playing mario 2 and everything and i just um i couldn't get over how different it was mm. than mario yeah, 1 I, I don't think i really batted an eye about it i was like yep this is mario 2 <laughs> oh innocence um i would say another game is Mario Kart. I think Mario Kart is very when it comes to like block I know it's like the highest selling game out there on the Nintendo Switch and it's been around forever, but I think Super Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo because the Super Nintendo has so many great games on it. I think Super Mario Kart is a very underlooked game in regards to the importance of gaming history. Well, when you also have a title that people are blatantly ripping off all over the place you know you've done something right right yeah, yeah that's very true because there was there was that one uh animal racing game that was on the uh the pc back then mm-hmm. and like it was share weird all over the place i think with just a couple characters you could play as and to get the full the full game i think had about eight characters but hmm. it was it it was base it was mario kart <laughs> That game was so hard. I remember me and my sister had to team up in Super Mario Kart to uh, to see if we could try to beat it. And it was like Luigi was always my like, arch nemesis. I, I gotta I gotta l- relearn how to play it because the the turning and stuff like that. Oh, it's it's horrible turning. Loose. The turning in Super Mario Kart for the for the Super Nintendo just absolutely atrocious. <laughs> There was like the most you could do is jump, and maybe you would get, maybe you could um, turn. Maybe we're just so used to the newer stuff now. Yeah, the new well, stuff was... is like slick. It takes a little, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get it, you got it. Well, uh, me and William were playing. Uh, was it last week? Yeah, last week. Yeah, and I, I, I'm okay at Mario Kart Eight, but I, I'm horrible at Super Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I can't do that one. It's just it's hard to do the drifting. Yeah, him and I were doing pretty. Like he he wasn't sure if I was going to catch up with him, but I was doing really well in Mario Kart Eight. Oh yeah, you do. <laughs> I I I don't meet a lot of people that at least in my local circles that the people I play with that I can actually get come close to beating me. <laughs> But every time I go online, I get absolutely stopped. So yeah, <laughs> going online is a reality check when you're good at video games. <laughs> Like, yeah, I was playing a friend of mine on Crash Team Racing, and I was not expecting it, but just, nope, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> once, once people learned in the uh, in the other versions um, how to do the, um, oh, what was that? What was that move? There was a certain thing that people would do, um, that the zigzagging thing that they would do. Uh, once people were doing that and constantly doing it, and it was defended as a legitimate way of playing the game, I'm like, yeah, I will never play online with this game, even if I wanted to. I think I know what you're talking about. It's kind of like um, Smash Brothers had a similar thing, and uh, David would know what I'm talking about in terms of in terms of that. There was like this whole thing where you kept 
blocking and the character would slide around all over the place uh-huh, uh-huh. and it became a legitimate way of playing the game that's the whole reason why i hate melee because half of the reason why it became so competitive is because they were taking advantage of essentially glitches in the game yeah i feel like and, well well it's programmed in therefore it's allowed <sighs> yeah but that's that's the reason why i can't play melee but i agree i agree wholeheartedly well, I mean, Meta Knight was programmed in in Brawl. And they they uh kill they kicked him out. I mean, imagine if somebody was holding a competition and someone decided to uh, do the glitch to play as uh, Master Hand. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's in there. <laughs> You're right. You're right. It's in there. I, oh well. I, you didn't say I couldn't play as him. In the yes, but we also didn't know you could access him. <laughs> If you don't know, you can play as Master Hand. My my buddy Hunter showed me that actually. It was like years after the fact. He was like, he's like, do this, do that, hold hold this joystick. Like, how do people like discover this? It's like, like how in the world do you discover a glitch that revolves around having two controllers plugged in, holding certain things down at the same time? It's like, just no way. Somebody had to program that in on purpose and leak it. Yeah, I don't know how some of these things. I don't know how people figure them out. Some I know they just do brute force, just trying to like you know whatever you know like Breath of the Wild is a prime example. Like people just all over the place trying to figure out ways to to hack that one. But like that Master Hand playing this Master Hand on the GameCube was just something else. Although I, d- I do love with Breath of the Wild people flying around where they'll oh yeah they'll with, with, the, them, like, with the with the with the stasis lock up. yeah the stasis lock they'll lock it in place they'll hit keep hitting it so it's uh it's building up momentum and then they'll grab a hold of it yeah it goes out of stasis and they go Pew! <laughs> yeah that's funny i've seen some people that have literally started doing like trick shots with the guardians well they'll figure out how to way to get it to bash up in the air and then do something that makes just sends it flying it's so interesting to see what these people are doing yeah, it's crazy what they've done with Breath of the Wild, I, and that's why I hope Breath of the Wild Two is very similar. Even though, even though Nick, I know you don't like it, um, Aiden Quinn says the best best Nintendo game ever, Mother Three. Now you're just bragging because we yeah. haven't got Mother Three. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, I've, not I've got here. a bootleg copy, but you got a bootleg. Yeah, one of these days I might have to have to. Uh, I'm still holding out hope. I'm still holding out hope for for Mother Three. Oh, well, you know we're, what? In, we're in the middle of the apocalypse. You never know. That might be the next thing that we get. <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> Nintendo would make so many new. Nintendo would be like they'd be uh, trending worldwide with Mother Three. Um, EPS five thousand says one of the favorite his favorite uh, best Nintendo games is Tetris on the Nintendo. I would say yeah, Tetris. Maybe not on the NES, but on the Game Boy. That was oh, uh, the, that was a game problem, changer. The problem is that there's this whole licensing thing with Tetris that happened where I don't think they can re-release the Tetris games anymore, the NES and the Game Boy ones. Yeah, speaking of that, I just had that right behind me. Yeah. That was a it, killer it, app. It's down here. I played, I played Tetris on the Game Boy like nothing else. I mean, seriously, nothing oh. else. Other than the Game Boy, and I thought like I thought it was actually kind of decent to Tetris until I tried tried playing Tetris ninety nine. Who, buddy? <laughs> that was <not> fun. <laughs> Tetris ninety nine. The thing about Tetris ninety nine for me is that I can't close the deal. Like I can get to two, but I've got to nine. I think is the highest I've ever gotten. I when, think I got to nine. What was yours, Devin? Fifteen. Fifteen. I can get top ten like like all day long. The the problem is, it's not truly like when you go to the um, the Tetris World Championship, it's literally who can outlast the other. But when you're playing Tetris 99, it's not outlasting the other person. It's getting more garbage to send to the other person. Mm-hmm. True. So, so I uh, I'm not good at that version. I'm good at outlasting people. So if it was just purely you know making the levels go faster and faster and faster, and then seeing who could outlast. I could probably hold my own, but when it's when it's just blocks upon blocks upon blocks, well, then that's when I really that's when I really lose it. Yeah, I agree there. 
that's why when like the whole dumping the garbage onto the other people's screens, I thought there was a couple times where I had like a really good run and all of a sudden my entire screen was full. Like, yeah. So full. Like it's so disheartening to get that. Yeah. And it's part of the game, but what are you going to do? Yeah, I, I agree. Still a fun game though. Uh, let's see. Sorry guys. I was in a total dead zone. Nothing. I was typing. Type. Typing was coming through, so it all hits at once. I promise it's not spam. <laughs> okay, Nick. No, don't worry, Nick. We know from you it won't be spam. What were you typing, though? Because it doesn't look like it came out at all. So retype something. And what what in the chat, what is your guys' favorite? Another Nintendo best game for me, Aiden says, is Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War. The only M rated amongst Nintendo's main IPs. Oh, I didn't know that. Hmm. Huh. Never heard of that one, actually. He must be from Japan. Because Fire Emblem games are named different. I'm wondering if that was like Our Path of Radiance or something. Something like that, probably. Um, yeah, and then... it's... Um... Oh, which... Nick I says... see it right here. I think it was on the... Yeah, it was one of the Super Nintendo games. Nick Clanton says, uh, okay, did I ever tell you that I actually own one of the six lunchboxes that belong to Jimmy from the movie The Wizard? They use six to make the movie, and I have one. Nick, how sure. do you how do you have one of those? That's like that's a weird that's a weird collectible to have, one of six lunchboxes owned by Jimmy. <laughs> that is not the weirdest collectible to have. I have a friend who owns an even weirder collectible. Yeah, what's that? I'm dying to know. He owns stuff from the movie Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck. Ooh. Yes. Like, what is it like the Howard the Duck costume? <laughs> um, you're getting warmer. The Howard. <laughs> he owns he, he owns a few things from that movie, but there's two in particular. There's what? two in particular. Uh, that, what, um, what are they? So he owns one of the Howard heads. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. That's it really doesn't. Cool. It doesn't have the. It doesn't have the feathers on it anymore. Oh, so it looks very weird. I think it would look weird either me. way. Um, there is also an infamous scene in that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been years since I've seen it. I don't think I remember. You're. It's at the beginning of the movie. Well, maybe. Is, is it the romantic scene? <laughs> no, no. Beginning of the movie. That I don't remember. It's been too long for me. Yeah, to I don't remember. remember. It's been way too long. <laughs> Um, but he he owns those. <laughs> I think it's just I think it's just pieces of it left now from the original uh, owner. But how did he get them? Uh, he bought them from the original owner, the person that that owned them after the the movie came out. That's and he, yeah. He also had like they did like when movies will wrap up, they'll do uh, gifts and stuff for uh, production and things like that. He owns a few items from that as well. Gotcha. Aiden, well, and, Aiden says well, that the Fire Emblem genealogy was rated T in Japan. Uh, he thinks it wasn't localized in the West because of the same issues uh, that Mother 3 had, which has some negative stereotypes in it. Oh, uh, okay. Um, are are the <laughs> stereotypes negative in, in, uh, in Mother 3? You said you played it, right, William? Um, I know there's some certain things in the game... Um, it might be a little difficult to explain them to somebody that doesn't quite get them. There's a race in it that is neither male nor female. Uh -huh. um, and isn't, I think they're not even quite human either. Um, the whole thing with them trying to like kind of explain them would gotcha. probably be a little more difficult for people over here. Gotcha. Oh man, one of these days I'll have to get. Do you do you have it then? Uh, just a localized version, you know, English dubbed, and uh, I'm for Game Boy Advance. Yeah, it's it's just a, it's just a English translated copy of it. It's here somewhere. Uh, wait, I thought I, I can't I see I anything on the desk here. That, though. Wasn't that a retro world? No, I bought it. Um, I bought it somewhere else. Oh, okay. Uh, I think he had he had one, but I didn't pick it up because I already had one. 
Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Okay. It's on the desk here somewhere. There's a lot of stuff back here. It's all good. I just want one of these days, maybe I'll pick up a version so I can play it. Yeah, it's definitely. An or you could do a traveling travel. pants thing and send it to all of us. You know, send it to me <laughs> yeah. and I'll send it to yeah. you. I, I, I never like sending stuff out to people like that in terms of. No, it's all good. I was just feedback. joking. Yeah. And um, EPS got it. E e EPS got. Um, all right. So look at the comment for what. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember those. <laughs> I don't remember that either. You don't remember that? No, not even after being mentioned. So at the beginning of the movie, when he's on Duck World, like when he gets hit by the tractor beam that pulls him to Earth, he's in his chair and the chair is busting through rooms in oh. the apartment building. And one of the rooms he goes through is a bathroom. Gotcha. Where uh, there is a uh, female duck taking a bath. Gotcha. Hunter, okay. do you have a... Do you you got Hunter said he bought his on Etsy, dubbed and everything. It's probably where some of the people at conventions get theirs. I'll probably I'll probably have to do that one day so I can like join the join the Mother Three Club because I get to I get to find that one person that had the um the Zelda bootlegs, uh, at the convention as well because he had he had a fan made Zelda game for the NES which used the graphics of um. Link's Awakening. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I, oh, I, I don't want to get. I want to get that. I think I remember that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey Nick, what is what would you say is your um your most epic Nintendo game of all time? I know you think Zelda Two is like your is your favorite, but what do you think is the most influential of all like of of uh? Of Nintendo, like Mario sixty four has to be one of the most influential. Wasn't it like the first three D game out there, or like you know three D Mario games, and really set the tone for a lot of people to follow? I would say yeah. I think just Nintendo in general, honestly, like there's a lot of things that Nintendo d has done that everybody like, like PlayStation when they made the PlayStation move. Tell me that wasn't a Wii remote. <laughs> you, oh, like, yeah. You know what I mean? yeah, they totally. Nintendo does it, and then everybody else is like, "Oh, that's stupid." And then PlayStation's like, "Hmm." <laughs> By the way, here you go. <laughs> I I don't know. I just Nintendo in general has been in, influential to video games. Like Stanley was influential to comics. Yeah, that, it's it's just true. I mean, I don't care what you want to say; it's true. <laughs> would you say Miyamoto is the Stanley? Yeah, I would say. <laughs> So, what else is going on in the world today? I still haven't decided if I'm going to buy a PlayStation. I think I might wait to Black Friday. At this point, you might as well. Yeah. Or should I save up an extra? Should I wait? And I think I can get one for two hundred bucks on Black Friday. A new one, two hundred bucks. Because I went on Craigslist to look for a PS4, and they wanted people wanted four hundred bucks for it. I'm like, what? No, it's it's four it's four hundred dollars for PlayStation Pro right now. Yeah, it's like they don't want to, like, I don't think you guys understand what Craigslist is supposed to be about. Yeah, but that's true. Like, that's why when I found my um my Spider-Man PS4 on Mercari, I got it for 250 with a game. Mm -hmm. The only thing it was missing was the, the controller. A lot of the times the PS4s I'm noticing, the controller, for some reason, is rare beyond reason. I, I don't, I, I mean, I get it, but then I also don't get it. Why, why that? Just those controllers seem to jack up the price. Like the Death Stranding one, I was uh, tempted to get because I like the black handprints on it. But the controller jacks it up to almost 500 bucks open. I never understood that. Mm -hmm. And the Spider-Man one is just this PlayStation controller with white buttons. But, mm. Huh. My, my buddy Hunter, his dad. His dad is also my friend. Um, and... He bought a PlayStation 4 last week. Hunter, why? Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Just a little conversation, side conversation. Why did your dad, why on earth did your dad buy a PlayStation 4? That's just there has to be at least one game he wanted for it. No way. Or this, maybe he wanted it. Maybe he wanted it as a Blu-ray player. Probably. Yeah, I, say, I, I bet it was that. It this, this dude is a total dad where, he, you know, he's not playing any video games. <laughs> you never know. You might have converted him. <laughs> See, maybe. Maybe. Um, 
I need to... My case. Skins. Hey, Mike, how are you? Long time no see. We're talking video games, Mike. Do you play video games even? <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of friends jumping in here, guys. I know, I know. It's a reunion. They must have heard that I was back in Michigan. That's yeah. where I'm originally from. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I'm originally from the Detroit area, but now I'm in the uh, Grand Rapids area. Not that it means anything. It basically just means here to here. Big state, though. <laughs> um, what are some of the things in your background, De Devin? I see... Uh... we got a lot of stuff. Depends on what you're <laughs> picking. <laughs> uh, like, the, the Wii games that I got... I got some of the Wii U collection, namely that came from you. Um, my Pac-Man board game, Oogie Boogie, Oogie has Boogie. Me a it's a singing Oogie Boogie as well, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm just that nerdy. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, and my Donkey Kong board game is behind me over here. I absolutely love that thing. <laughs> yeah, I love how I love the, the old retro <laughs> stuff. And I'm yes, Mike. I'm, Yes, Mike, I'm in Grand Rapids right now. We'll have to catch up. Hit me up on Facebook and we can like we can catch up. I'll tell you when uh maybe we can visit each other. But I'm still on the road to try to find the last uh I think I'm missing a couple pieces from that um Donkey Kong board game unfortunately. Oh yeah, well, although it's still in great condition though. Well, that's good. I think I'm missing some of the barrels and the little Jumpman characters, but that's about it. All the car cards are there. <laughs> So, so I got EPS. I got EPS in the the chat because um, we were mentioning that the movies and stuff. Um, there's one item I would like from an old an older movie that Margo will not let me have because the movie that it's from is um, it scared a lot of kids back in the day. And I've been giving him hints as to what it is. It's from it's from 1985. It's rated PG and it's a sequel. A sequel. And he just got it. <laughs> oh, Return to Oz? Return to Oz. No, I would. Yeah. I, I'd love to have one of the masks from the uh, the Wheelers. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'd love to have one of those. I don't know. EPS is really good with this stuff. There's some of the, like, he got a couple of my trivia questions back when I, I don't know if it was silly to me. It seemed uh, pretty hard to me, but he got it instantly. Very well, he, he, yeah. it, it took him a little bit to get it. You can't do trivia with EPS 5000. He always gets, he always, he used to, when I did videos more often, he would always correct me when I, when I said something wrong. And I'd, <laughs> yeah, like, I'd say I'm some interested. stuff wrong all the time. For anybody who's a Simpsons fan here. If anybody knows Kang and Kodos, the big green squid yep. aliens from the Treehouse of Horror episodes, mm -hmm. which one is female? EPS, you're not allowed to answer. <laughs> so, um, put it in the comments. Well, is there a female? First off, yes, there one is. of them is female. Okay. Of I, just, is I, I just only I only remember that in one of the, one episode they say which one it, it they say that one of them is female, and I cannot remember which one. Well, and I got a fifty one, a fifty I, shot I, so. I, so and so and this is my sister and then he's hello <laughs> and they <laughs> it's right in one of the episodes they're introducing well, themselves well they right. always well they always go in order of kang and kodos is it kodos it's the female yeah all right <laughs> ah, <laughs> oh, there but, you go speak <laughs> that was good that was some good uh I, deduction right there yeah, I actually owe him that too because um in the chat like I had the ghostbuster soda um, the the uh, Slimer uh, high C drink. Uh -huh. I still need to send him a can of those <laughs> <laughs> because he got another one of my questions too. So yeah, I still owe that to you. You just should I'll have a disclaimer. Up. Disclaimer: EPS five thousand. Not a lot to answer. Yeah, you're. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, oh, I like uh, El Barto showing up. That's that's another good Simpsons reference. <laughs> yeah. What's up, oh, El Barto and Christian oh. Sims? What's up, guys? Homer, Homer trying to do his yeah. uh, version of it, and he screws it up. <laughs> I love that. I was about to bring that up. <laughs> okay. And then he realizes what it was he what he what he wrote. Yeah. <laughs> Not PC, but we'll we'll yeah. leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, one of the episodes praised on The Simpsons was one of the ones where Homer meets a gay guy, and I'm like, why is this so praised? He's very homophobic. True, but I don't know. Yeah, I think it was just during John the time. Waters. Just during the time. The Simpsons has been around so long that yeah. a lot of the things that were once taboo are 
or well, a lot of the things that are now taboo just aren't anymore. Like well, a boo. Well, I mean, Skinner. Skinner was he? He was gay all through the series, and nobody batted an eye. Who Skinner? What yeah. am I saying? Skinner. Um, What's Smith, his name? Smithers. 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 Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I I thought he had the right name, but yeah, yeah, he's been. I don't think Homer knows he is though. No, but I don't, he, no, 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 I don't think I don't think there was ever any backlash of the the character being being gay. I never saw any black backlash. What the hell? There's too much on my mind with everything going on in the world uh, right now. Well, <laughs> Simpsons, like I said, Simpsons has been around just for too long that like things are now just like like a boo. They had to get rid of a boo. I don't see the I don't see the reason. Well, Hank Azaria died. Who? The guy who voiced him. No, nah, I think they got had to get rid of Abu because of um. Well, yeah, there was a reason, but I think he just passed away recently. Oh. Unless I'm losing my mind. I had a perfect way to keep Abu around. They they should have just said Abu was faking his accent to fit in. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they could have kept him. They could have changed the voice actors. They could have kept him and everything. Um, Alberto just brought up a thing that there apparently there was a rumor of Simpsons Hit and Run coming to the Switch. I would love that. Number one, that would be nice. Oh, that would be such a good game. I did. I did not know that. Hmm. What? That the Simpsons Hit and Run might be coming to the Switch. I'm actually blown away by that one. Who said that? Alberto in the chat. Oh, Alberto usually. That'd be really cool. Um, there was. If anybody knows the arcade one ups, they're apparently going to have a uh, on June 10th a um, a reveal of some new games that they're going to be putting out, and there's rumor of the Simpsons Brawler coming out. I would be throwing money at their feet if they do that. <laughs> Instantly. That would be an instant buy for me. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else, but that's that game was Brawl awesome. Game was one of my I, favorite. I, I was Marge. I used the vacuum cleaner like nobody I always else. either used Bart or Homer. Homer had the bowling ball, right? Yeah. And, and then Bart had a skateboard. Yeah. I I, I've, 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 I just I I mix I mixed around. She had the I'm pretty uh, sure she had her saxophone, I thought. No, she oh. had a uh I can see that. Jump rope. Oh, jump oh, rope. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she should have um, had her saxophone. One of my other favorite Super Nintendo games is Bart's Nightmare. I absolutely love that. Dude, game. you're like the only other person that I know that has ever played that game. That game was awesome. Oh, it's so fun. It's such a weird game, too. Yeah, that game was awesome. It took me forever to learn it because I didn't bother with the instruction manual. Yeah, but... I didn't bother with the instruction manual either. Like the first <laughs> part of the ga game where you're shooting the bubblegum bubbles and like, what is going on? <laughs> it's such a interesting game though also um crusty's fun house where you had to save the oh light. that game was fun that i was never played fun. i never played that one that was a puzzle game was it? it was a puzzle game it was kind of like lemmings where you had to set up the pathway oh, to save I, the light. I like that concept of game so uh before we close out uh the show i wanted to bring up uh, nintendo had a uh trailer come out for the dlc for uh pokemon oh yeah and they showed uh footage of uh gallerian uh slow bro oh yeah that new that slow bro looks cool he's got yes. like a mega man arm yes <laughs> oh yeah yes. yeah yeah I, the, I remember the, shell, the shell bit his arm instead of biting his tail it's kind of cool though like i have really enjoyed that yeah he he's he's now a poison psychic type hmm. and he has an exclusive uh move which is basically an arm cannon move <laughs> And it poison it poisons the enemy and does damage based on, uh, I think what the what will do the most damage to an opponent. Uh -huh. So if they're if if the opponent is weak to um, physical attacks, it'll do physical damage. When and if does they're it... weaker to magic uh, to special attacks, it'll do special damage. I heard the DLC drops on uh, what June seventeenth. Yeah, a couple weeks. Probably something else that was going to be shortly revealed on the Nintendo Direct oh, is not happening. Next next uh, uh, next week actually. Next uh if it's seventeenth, next Wednesday. There's something I saw and William, uh, William you commented on it that it was uh one of those Facebook groups about gaming that there's going to be a technically a physical release of the uh the uh the download in Japan. There is? Yes. It'd be nice if they did that over here for the collectors. But it's not, but I, William, I saw you commenting on it. It's not a physical release. It's more just the case with the download code inside oh. of it, which is, which is which is fine because it's technically DLC to begin with. 
And there are certain games. They've done that with certain games. They did it with um, the DuckTales HD remake. Yeah. And they did it with uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 for the PS3, which those cases are worth money now. Or at mm -hmm. least they yeah. were for a while. Yeah. I don't know if they still are. Ken, a while ago, you said you got Death Squared for the Switch, and that was just the download code. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like it's never happened before. Right, right. Yeah, I'm just not a big fan of them still. I would just prefer that physical cart. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I but totally if, would too. But right. if, it, if it's going to be a game that's digital and digital only and they're not releasing a physical version, to put out a case with a DLC code in it for collectors to have a case. Yeah. And if they want to open it, they can and get the DLC. That's cool. But yeah, I don't like it when they're releasing a game say, oh, we're releasing a physical version of it, and it's just digital, like a $60 game that's digital, that's just a code in a case. I don't like that. Yeah, that, that's what I thought when Sonic Mania first came out, because they had that big box edition with the Sonic Oh, yeah, and yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and I yeah was it had like, no game it in it. It doesn't have the game in it, and it's just digital. It just seemed weird. Apparently, there was talks that there was going to be a physical cartridge in there at one point, or I or something like that. No, the metal card that was in there was supposed to have the d download code printed on it, but it never did. They ended up putting a paper slip. <laughs> I never opened it. I still have it. I'm t actually de debating on opening it soon. Maybe for a YouTube video. I don't know. <laughs> always, always, if you're going to open it, yeah, do it for a YouTube video. But that's about it, guys. We're at 8 p.m., so... Uh, time flies when you're having fun. Thank you, guys. I guess we didn't talk too much about the, um, the greatest games of all time. We did it here and there, but um, but I don't know. Guys, it's uh, dangerous to go alone. Please share this podcast with a friend. If you guys have any um, any uh, questions or whatever, you know, shout them out during the podcast. We'd love to, to interact with you guys. Nick Clanton, I saw your comment earlier. Uh, if you can get everything ready and you want to be on the show next week, yeah, just hit me up, man. We'll make it happen. Um, you're always a welcome member of the cast. Uh, guys, uh, again, we love you. We cherish you. Please be safe. And, yeah, that's about it.